All right, man. Yeah. So moving on now, I guess we can lump these two former Bruins together. Um, okay. But you mentioned it. The Leafs also signed Nick Ritchie and Andre Kasha. So yeah. Nick Ritchie coming in at two years, 2.5 million AAV. And Andre Kasha, one year, 1.25 million per, well, for that one season. So both of these guys have played for the Boston Bruins, starting with Nick Ritchie. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to that 2014 draft. (laughs) And Don Jerry. The Leafs are on the board at eight. And, you know, a lot of speculation, even heading into the draft, is that they were eyeing Nick Ritchie because he's that tough Ontario kid. And the Leafs needed that power forward and needed to get, you know, bigger and tougher in the top six. And then the whole Don Cherry thing, right? Remember that? Oh, my God. And the Leafs obviously ended up taking William Nylander, which turned out to be a great draft pick. Yeah, not bad. But Nick Ritchie went two picks later to the Boston Bruins. Don Cherry, absolutely, or sorry, to the Anaheim Ducks, I should say. At the time, yeah. At the, the time, Don mm-hmm. Cherry absolutely lost his mind. <laughs> Remember that coach's corner? I love to pull that up. He's like, because I think Nylander like went back to Sweden for like some because whoever he was playing for at the time or whatever and don just going off about how he went back because he's scared he's scared of the online and him going off about how shanahan didn't have the guts to take the ontario boy i'm like oh my god just, well don just, got his wish we we got we finally got richie so. oh god just a classic don cherry ontario boy rant but yeah, yeah it's come full circle now because after having a breakout season with the bruins last year so nick richie last season he had 15 goals. Yeah, 26 15 points. 15 goals in 56 games, 26 points. His best season in the National Hockey League. They did not give him a qualifying offer, so that's why he's a free agent at the age of 25. Yeah. And uh, even going back to like his draft year and just some videos that I saw popping up on Twitter, like he grew up as a Leaf fan. Like his dad was a Leaf fan. He's oh, from- then it's it's certain to work out then, Bruno. He's Yeah, it always works out. <laughs> oh, Everyone who's man. from the GTA always flourishes as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Can I say something? I've always thought this is kind of funny. The take for a while was that the Leafs didn't draft and pick up enough. Like Ontario boys was always like the saying, and they got shot on for that. And now it's like kind of like the joke that like we get all these OHL guys and we kind of make fun of it because it's like, ah, it never works out. So it's just, just to show like Leafs fans or fans in general, they're never happy. Oh yeah. It's hilarious, man. But uh, no, things have come full circle and he, you know, I was, I was looking at some quotes from Nick Ritchie. He's, he's really excited. Like the Leafs were, were on his radar. He, he toured the practice facility and he, you know, he looked at all the things that the Leafs had to offer. And for him, it was, essentially a no brainer two years, two and a half million. He's going to get an opportunity to play with the big boys. Again, we don't know who is going to be that third guy on those top two lines, but Nick Ritchie is, is clearly going to be in play to be one of those guys. He signed the biggest deal of all these guys that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Like you said, he's established. Yeah. So, you know what, Lepore, like I, I like this signing and listen, I'm not like a huge fan of, of players like Nick Ritchie. He doesn't skate very well. Mm -hmm. but he's a big dude. He's 6'2", 230 pounds. He's not afraid to throw his weight around. He's going to lay hits. He's going to play physical. He's going to play mean. He can drop the gloves if he needs to. And, you know, like I said, he scored 15 goals last season. And if he does that over a full, like, I'd be happy, Lepore. If you get 15 to 20 goals out of Nick Ritchie. Oh, my God. 82 game season. I think Leaf fans are jumping for joy. They'd be ecstatic, man. One thing, um, it's kind of going around about him. And it's funny, a buddy told me this. Who's a, a buddy of mine who's a big Bruins fan told me this when we picked him up. And then Steve Dangle pointed it out in his review. And then I noticed just Norse in the stats. He takes a lot of penalties. Yes. That he is takes correct. a lot. And like my Bruins fan body was quick to say like a lot of stupid penalties. So like he was like, he was hated by a, by a lot of Bruins fans for that. So some just to throw some negativity at it, but hopefully you can clean that up because uh, you're not going to be, you're not going to be liked by too many fans in Toronto. If you're taking a lot of bad penalties. Yeah, exactly. And he's not going to be a favorite of Sheldon Keith. If he continues to go out there and take stupid penalties like he did last season with Boston. But, but again, like, I think this is a good bet to take on a player who could probably get better 
And listen, he he had the opportunity to play with quality players in Boston. Yeah, you not know, bad. <laughs> spending time on a line with David Krejci, and I'm sure he had exposure to their other star players as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, if he's going to get an opportunity to play with the Leafs core four, you would you would like to think that he's going to have a similar season, you know, scoring around 15, 20 goals and being a secondary scorer on this Leafs team. That's essentially all the Leafs are asking him to do. Yeah. Like bring your physicality, chip in offensively. Like you said, Laporte, don't take stupid penalties. Just play your game, stay in your lane, and you're probably going to be successful on this team. Yeah, man. For sure. All right. So now let's quickly talk about Andre Kasha. Yeah. This, this a movie could be written about this kid. <laughs> this is a, another very intriguing player because he's got talent. But the yeah. problem with Andre Kasha is that he just cannot stay healthy. Dude, I looked up where, where was it? What website was I on? He has like five noted concussions. Yeah, and he's in his good. mid. Yeah, in his mid twenties, like five. Not oh. good. He he only played three games last season with Boston. He had yeah. concussion issues all year. So, was, was the pretty- story? Not, did, did he not get hurt? Like in like the second game of the playoffs in the bubble. And then he got hurt again, like right at the start of this season. For like, it was a disaster for Boston. They traded a first round pick for him, eh? Yeah, I believe they did. Yeah, it was a deadline deal because they got rid of ba- they got rid of Bacchus. I think he was involved yeah, in the Bacchus deal. It was the Bacchus yeah. deal, so he came the other way. And there was a first, and I'm sure that first round pick had a, lot, had a lot to do with like getting rid of Bacchus. But yeah, like there was potential for this kid, and he was putting up numbers. But like you said, he just can't stay healthy. Yeah, that's the problem with Andre Kasha. Like you said, the concussion issues. I mean, this guy is essentially a walking Band-Aid, but when you look at his numbers, so his his best season in the NHL came in 2017-2018 with Anaheim, 20 goals and 38 yeah. points in 66 games. That's the one, yeah. Followed that up with 20 points in 30 games the next season. And then the season after that is when he got traded to the Boston Bruins. He ended up racking up four assists and 11 playoff games in the bubble. Um, But again, another guy who the Leafs are gambling on. And believe me, Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keefe in that front office, they're not stupid. They're coming into the season probably anticipating that this guy's going to be injured at some point. (laughs) Yeah. And that's why they only signed him to a one-year deal. But if he actually stays healthy, and I'm not saying he has to play the full season, but if you get, you know, 80% of games, from this guy, like he's another guy that can score 20 goals, Lapore, mm. if he's playing with, especially with the core four. So yeah. again, this is, I think this is a very, it's super low risk. It has the potential to be a really quality signing on a one-year deal. And that it's really as simple as that. I mean, I don't think there's that much else we can really say about this guy. Yeah. One thing that's very like hashtag Toronto Maple Leafs is that his coursey numbers are like bananas good. Like the geeks love this guy. So, I mean, whether that played into it, I'm sure it played into it because we all know about Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keefe. But yeah, I mean, he's a good player. <laughs> he's a good player. It's a matter if he can stay healthy and like Boston wasn't willing to do with it anymore. And something so- someone pointed out too was, here's this guy who dealt with everything he's dealt with. Um, as far as injuries go, and like let's face it, like this probably is his last shot at getting a career in this league. He signed early. He signed early, Charlie, and I'm sure he just kind of wanted to get out of the way. And I read somewhere too, it kind of came on the Leaf side as well that like let's get this kid in. He can be evaluated, get healthy, the facilities, all that stuff, and we've sort of like a long summer with him to see where he's at physically. So. Yeah, and I think the big draw for a lot of these guys who are signing these cheap contracts is that they probably know that they're going to have a very good opportunity to play with the core four and boost their numbers. Yeah. So, like, at the very least, like, I don't think all these players are coming in and being like, yes, I'm the final piece that's going to get the Leafs over the top and win them a Stanley Cup. Now, I'm sure most of them probably have that in the back of their heads, but I think a big draw is that, hmm, if I prove myself and I get an opportunity to play with John Tavares and William Nylander as the third guy on that line, and I have a 20 goal season, well, guess what? Cha-ching. Yeah. I've upped my value. Right. And I think that's a lot of, I think that definitely plays into the decision-making process. I, I don't think the sole reason that guys sign in certain places 
is to just win a Stanley cup. And I think, you know, for people to think that is actually insane that the main reason that a lot of these guys are signing in certain places is strictly to win a championship. I get in discussions like, like the car rides to hockey with my nephew of like, you know, why this guy sign here? And I'm like, well, the game, a lot of money. He's like, yeah, but they're not good. I'm like, I know buddy, but, but they friend, just don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. They don't. So you hate to tell a nine year old that, but uh, it's like, he, he was shocked to hear that Hyman left. So well, why'd he leave to go to Edmonton? Like we're better than them. Are we? It's like, you know, they give him a lot of money, pal. They give him a lot of money. So you make yeah, the best and, of it. And, and that's just the reality of the situation. People don't like to bring it up. A lot of the times we all like to say, you know, everyone plays to win a Stanley cup, but man, I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of other factors involved. And especially when guys are, are UFAs and they see these big contracts that are being dished yeah. out to them. I mean, this it's life changing money. And for a lot of these guys, it's the one big contract they're ever going to sign in the NHL. And it's the one opportunity they have. And, you know, I think you'd be crazy not to take it. If you're a player yeah. like Zach Hyman, like Blake Coleman, you know, guys like that who are signing some of these deals. So, yeah, for, for me, I've, what I've always pointed out, and I think people so quickly forget because we, we get all fanboy about it, is that you're dealing with people here. And like, it's like any other workplace, any other environment where you have so many different personalities and so many different wants from people. And even you even have people in different life phases, like the guy who is 23, 24 is not in the same phase of his life as like the vet with like a wife and two kids when, I, and these playing to the decisions of, okay, where to play, like, um, uh, where do we want to live? I guess specifically, like, are we happy here? Are we not like you guys it's all about money i mean they'll leave one they'll leave and i'm talking about hawk here any job they'll leave their job for more money where other guys you know i'll take less money to be happy here and just people try to like dissect it all the time and at the end of the day we don't know what's going on in these guys lives and between their ears and like their family stuff and all the things that play into these decisions about where to play so no you nailed the lapore and there's exactly guys are at different stages of their lives and especially the guys that have families yeah. And, you know, you got to think about your kids and where they're going to school and things like that. And where they're you always up. hear that. Eh? They always point that out, like where the kids go to school. I think mean, that's like an underrated thing. Like, yeah. again, let's face it. You're a millionaire. Your kids are probably going to some like prep school, something special. Like, do you want to pull them out of their prep school? Or if you do, you want to make sure there's an equivalent, like wherever you're going, like it's your family, man. Yeah. So there's so many different factors that come into play when these guys are signing contracts as UFAs. But yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, these two guys coming over from the Boston Bruins, not much else to say about them.